Hi everybody, meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Uh, it's fourth video today, believe it or not. We've got uh, we did the, our weather video this morning. Uh, now we're going to do the um, European model from today, and then the late afternoon GFS model run, which was very interesting. I think you're going to find that fascinating. And also the two weather videos in between were not exactly weather videos. I decided to make meatballs today, so I put up two videos to show you how you, if you would like to make meatballs my way. It's easy and I've been told they're very, very good. So give those two videos a look. And subscribe to my YouTube channel because not only do you get weather and you get notifications when uh, new videos come up, but you may start seeing some food stuff on, on here because I, like uh, I like to cook. It's very relaxing. And you can hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. You subscribe uh, uh, to my channel. Helps me with Google brings more of you here, and you get notified whenever new videos come up, okay? So let's get going with the new European, and as we discussed earlier, blocking is going to be key uh, through all of this weather pattern that's developing, and the strength of the block and the trough in the west and how those two interact will determine how what kind of weather we're going to see, and, and the models overnight and uh, during today have come into in, come in line. Uh, the GFS, if you remember from yesterday, had that big ridge in the east and trough in the west for, for late in the week and early next week. The European had exactly the opposite. It was like looking at two different worlds. And what it kind of did today was it took the, um, the, the block uh, and, and, and made it more important so that the GFS lost that ridge in the west, in the east. Uh, still has the troughing in the west, but it's not nearly as deep. So the models just kind of blended together. And if the blend works out, uh, it could be pretty interesting later in the week and into the weekend. So here we go. So we got, we, we've got this ridge in the east now with the cold air pulling out. And, of course, we have the system that's going through the Great Lakes. And you'll notice that the European, as we go through the end of the week, really does have a, a sign kind of a signature blocking look here. You've got low pressure near Hudson's Bay, and you've got an extension of that that's trying to develop out at 50 north, 50 west, and there's your blocking high to the north. So the flow is no longer uh, being dominated by a trough in the, uh, in the west. Uh, you have actually a bit of a ridge that builds up uh, in the west, and there's your, you know, your flow is, is more west, northwest to northwest, so that brings down cold air, and the question is going to be whether there's something in the flow that triggers a weather system here in the east. Now, one of the things with regards to blocking is that if the blocking is too strong, everything's going to get forced to the south. And as we look at the Europeans' view here of the blocking, uh, it is pretty strong. I mean, you've got this low out to the east. You, you have this low near Hudson's Bay. You know, there's a bit of a shortwave trough that's here, but everything winds up on the European it has actually not a much of a different look than the GFS. The only thing, all it's saying is that the block on the European model is stronger, and therefore any weather system that uh, develops uh, that comes across the United States is going to get suppressed somewhat to the south. And indeed, that's what the European did today. Uh, when we look at, I can show you the surface, and there you have uh, a low near Oklahoma, this is all cold air that's coming into the east, and that low translates to central Georgia, redevelops southeast of the North Carolina coast. Actually, the uh, European produced some accumulating snows in areas that have not gotten any this year, uh, but the northern extent of that snow uh, doesn't get much further north than northern Delaware and northern Maryland, so it's primarily uh, a, a um, Virginia, northern North Carolina event, according to the European. Now, I'm going to tell you that I'm as skeptical of that as I am going to be of the new GFS, which I will show you, the, uh, we'll go to the GFS model from late this afternoon. And we'll put that up. And this has a block, just like the uh, European does, but it's not as dominant. Uh, it's kind of, you know, it, it's got that sort of subtle balance that you're required with regards to bringing snows up to the northeast. So if you look at the GFS by comparison, so this is Sunday morning on the GFS, and here is Sunday morning on the European. So you can see here on the European, this area is so much more dominant and so much stronger 
than the GFS is. The GFS has the low out at 50 and 50, but it has this active, you know, trough in the West that's sending weather systems riding along it, and one will be moving off the coast during Sunday. You know, if this kind of setup is correct, this would put cold air, you know, locked in pretty much into the eastern states. And if you can get a decent little shortwave trough to move along, you can wind up with a pretty uh, sizable snowfall. And indeed, this is what the GFS does. And you can see that it's the shortwave is right in here Sunday morning. So you know, there's a definable little uh, kink that's there that winds up moving out to the east. And when we put the precip up, and then I'm going to back up because there's actually one weather system before this that requires some looking at. But here's the low. Uh, this is for Saturday. There's cold air. The rain snow line would probably set up somewhere down near um, the, the Delmarva Peninsula into northern Virginia. You can see snow and ice uh, into Ohio, snow into northeastern Ohio and into Pennsylvania. Low pressure near St. Louis, which moves straight east uh, toward Louisville. Snow begins as a Saturday evening now. Snow moving into the New York City area and Long Island. Uh, snowing hard in sou southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, ice up in northern Maryland. That primary low goes into northern West Virginia, begins to redevelop off the Delaware coast. So you've got this pretty strong but narrow band of overrunning precip that occurs uh, for areas from central New Jersey uh, into southern New England and into northeastern Pennsylvania. And then the low moves out and that goes away. Now there is a lead system here that's coming across first and that's going to be on Thursday night, Friday morning. And on this particular run of the model, it's a little less deep and it's a little bit further to the south. Uh, so it actually brings some snow down almost to the coast here. Uh, not quite, but almost. And I wouldn't be surprised if this one winds up being even uh, a little bit weaker and further south on subsequent runs. So we're going to watch this because, you know, if this block is going to become more important, these lows are going to want to go further south. And one of the things we have to recognize here is the fact that you know, the GFS has done this two runs in a row with this, actually several runs in a row where it wanted to bring up something up in areas to the north rather than to the south. But bear in mind, if the block winds up being stronger and more dominant, then we're going to wind up with something a little flatter and further to the south. So the whole precip shield will have to be shifted um, southward. And, you know, it's very interesting how this is all playing out. And then that goes out. You still have high pressure in New England, but then another low and a more important one comes out in Kansas early next week, and that rides now uh, east of Chicago into central Michigan. It's not nearly as deep or as defined, as developed as it was on the prior run, so uh, I'm going to hold back any judgment on this uh, until we get a little bit closer. Plus, you know, we have two other weather systems ahead of it to look at, so I'm not even going to bother with the third. So let's look at, we'll look at, deal with the first and deal with the second. And, you know, just for laughs, I'll put the snow amounts that the GFS generates. So those of you who want snow can maybe salivate a little bit. Uh, but this is, I'll put the 24-hour snowfall so it won't be cumulative. And I'll give you a close-up view. And there we go. Okay, so this is for Thursday night into Friday morning, where it produces basically a coating to a, uh, the southern edge of a coating down to central New Jersey, a coating to a couple of inches as you go up to the north because of the track being so close. You know, and that's done. Now, here's the second one, which uh, it produces much more snow on, on this particular run. Actually, some pretty substantial amounts uh, from Chicago, which has gotten almost no snow since mid-December, uh, but has some actually some 10-inch snow amounts across northern Ohio. Uh, even down into central Ohio, every bit of 6 to 8, 6 to 10 across Pennsylvania, 6 to 10 across New Jersey and Long Island and southernmost Connecticut with lesser amounts as you go north. Again, this is being produced by the model because of the surface it, it's producing. If everything winds up getting suppressed further south and, and, and flatter, then this is going to be much less and, again, shifted much per, further south. So we're just kind of at this point, being that it's Sunday, we're looking at this, you know, with a very, very skeptical eye. but Given that the model is producing uh, pre the precip, it is it is reflecting this in, in the snow amounts. And by the way, for those for, the, for this area in here, uh, the bulk of that is going to fall from late Saturday afternoon through or for, through Sunday morning. So the bulk of it will fall Saturday night. So if you're going to start throwing uh, sun angle and um, you know warm ground nonsense at me, 
um, I've already countered the sun angle and the warm ground is not going to be relevant because it's not going to be a warm ground. Okay, we just had single digits and teens. We're going to warm up for one day this week on on uh, on Tuesday with temperatures in the 50s, and then it's going to get somewhat colder again. But you know, but that stuff doesn't play anyway. If it's snowing hard enough, uh, the warm ground gets easily compensated within an hour or so, anyhow. So uh, let's leave it at this, and we will uh, check in uh, tomorrow to see what the models do in the overnight runs. Uh, in the meantime, check out the latest posts on meteorologistjoechoppy.com. We have all, more on this from what we wrote earlier today. And uh, also, uh, you can check out Angry Ben's view of all this on uh, nycweathernow.com. And uh, don't forget to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you've lasted this long through four videos today, you must really like me. So, so do a Sally Field and hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. And this way you get notified every time a new video comes up. And we'll, of course, uh, give you a full view of the weather across the United States tomorrow when we cut our next weather video. Have a great day.